Hello and welcome to the Flix Forum podcast, where each episode we go back and we look at a Netflix original film in the order of release. This episode, we have Netflix 244th film from 2020. It's the Japanese anime romantic fantasy film, A Whisker Away, or Nakitai Wataishi Wai Neku o Kaburu. It's directed by Junisi Shato and Tomato Shibiyama, and it stars Mirei Shida, Natsuki Hane, and Hiroku Oki. I'm Jesse. I'm writing solo for this episode on a Netflix original film, as always. <laughs> Sorry for the pronunciation on some of those uh, names, but not uh, fluent in Japanese, obviously, but obviously an international film for us to look at today, so I'm a little bit excited. We do kick off our show with the fast flicks, where we do a quick summary of what the film is all about. But before I do that, Spoiler alert, if you want to check this one out, give us a pause, come back later on because a fast flicks is a quick little summary and this one is about a girl transforming into a cat to get closer to her crush. Hmm, intriguing. (laughs) Hopefully it intrigues you a little bit. Um, Let's talk a little bit about how this one ended up on Netflix. So realistically, we're seeing this a lot with the films at the moment that we're covering, but the film was scheduled for release in Japanese theaters on the 5th of June of 2020, but was pulled from the schedule due to the COVID-19 pandemic. Um, It was then sold to Netflix, uh, who released it digitally on the 18th of June, 2020. So not a big turnaround there. On September 18 of 2020, it was announced that the film would then have a limited theatrical run in Japan until October of 2020, and then released on Blu-ray and DVD in Japan uh, from June 2021. So a little bit of a mixed uh, release throughout the world, but Netflix hold the rights to this one across the world. This one was, um, as I said, released on Netflix on the 18th of June 2020. It was animated in Japan, as we can probably gather, in Tokunami um, the, in the Archie province as well. So this was nominated for a few awards. It did win Best Animated Program or Series at the Asian Academy Creative Awards in 2020. And it was also nominated at the Anime Trending Awards for Anime Movie of the Year and for Couple of the Year as well in that um, category. Translations across the world in Japan, the direct translation is, I want to cry, I wear a cat. So it makes a lot of sense once we talk a little bit more about this film. In Spanish, it was called Cat Love. In French, it was called Far From Me, Near You. In Italian, it was called Mio, which is our, our main character, Feline Love. In Portuguese, Cats Cry Too. In Russian, it was called Through My Tears, I Pretend to Be a Cat. And in Chinese, If I Want to Cry, I Put On a Cat Mask. And that is obviously leading to where we're gonna talk about this idea of a human transforming into a cat and and the consequences, I guess, of that transformation at times. What are the critics and audiences saying about this one? So, on Rotten Tomatoes, it sits on 93%. That's on 15 reviews, so definitely fresh there. The audience has it a little bit lower on 76%. That's on more than 100 ratings. IMDb, pretty solid on a 6.7 out of 10 on nearly 12,000 ratings. Letterboxd, a little bit high as well. It's a 3.5 out of 5 on 118,800 ratings. Huge, actually logged by 157,000 people. So a lot of people obviously like their anime films on Letterboxd. The other one I'll add here for this, obviously it's an anime film. There's a website called My Anime List. On that one, it sits on a 7.3 out of 10 and that's on 242,000 ratings. That's a lot. A lot of people have watched this film, which is good for Netflix, I guess, and they're making um, these types of films because we have done a couple in the past, if I go back and think about um, Blam, which was a long time ago, but yeah, we've definitely covered a a Japanese anime before. What are my early thoughts? I think um, I, I like anime films. I don't watch them religiously, but I enjoy them when I do watch them. This one was a little bit out there, um, but it had good heart, a nice message, and, and enough to keep me engaged throughout. So positive from me as well. Let's talk about the characters in this one. So let's start off with um, Mio or Muge. Um, this is this is our central character, and a little bit of a frustrating character at times. Very over the top. This high school girl would probably annoy the living daylights out of me in real life. Uh, She's got this one close friend who so everyone sort of admires for actually staying friends with her, um, Yoji, and you know often tries to to get <laughs> Muge to to um, tone down her feelings for this character Hinode, who's our other main character. We'll talk about in a minute. But if we're talking about Muge, um, her parents have split. Her mum barely communicates with her. She's living with her dad and his new partner um, Karu, who Muge is pretty horrible towards. Um, but, but she isn't afraid to speak her mind. Um, but in saying that, 
she, for some reason, can't tell a guy that she actually likes him. And that guy, Hinode, who I mentioned before, uh, a bit of an, an interesting character. He's sort of lonely after losing his pet dog, replaces it with this pet cat almost, which is Taro, who is Muge in disguise. And, you know, he's dealing with these teenage issues too, I guess, where he wants to, to do pottery um, like his grandfather does, but he doesn't know how to address it with his family because they, they sort of want him to succeed in life and, and not do that. And... Um, especially because this studio that his grandfather's working in, they have to close it down. Um, he has this annoying sister as well, who's sort of like crushing on this worker at the pottery barn with him. And um, apart from that, you know, his real issue, I guess, is that he isn't open with his communication like Muge is, whereas Muge is over the top. He's sort of reserved and, and is a bit afraid to explain how he's actually thinking. The only other real characters to talk about, there's this guy called the Mask Seller, and he's sort of the villain of the story. And he offers this temptation of being a cat so people can get closer to other people, I guess, as, as a pet, as a cat. And he sort of uh, does some villainous things throughout the film. And I mentioned before, um, Karu as well, the stepmom of Muge, seems like a lovely person, um, sort of becomes more intertwined with this story as, and this is a bit of a spoiler, but her pet cat um, takes on Muge's body towards the end, uh, Kanako. So sort of becomes more entwined in the story and sort of allows Muge to actually transform and be a little bit nicer as well. The directors. Um, for this one, so um, Junichi Sato has got 58 directing credits, best known for his work on Evangelon, and then Tamaka Shibiyama, only four directing credits, but it's worked on films like Spirited Away and The Girl Who Leapt Through Time. So some big um, anime films that most people would be aware of and, and know of, which is pretty, um, I guess, a, a nice thing to hear. Scenes, let's talk about some scenes. Really hard in animated films to sort of identify scenes that, that you're really a big fan of, I guess. But for me, I think, I. There's a scene where, um, I guess I'll call it a cat fight between Muge's stepmom and mum. I thought that was quite funny and humorous in the moment when it appeared in the film. And the other thing that I thought was cool was towards the end of the film, Muge ends up going to this cat island. It was really cool, um, especially this human bar that um, she goes to and the advice and the stories that they tell Muge to. I like that too. Um, and a couple of things I wasn't a big fan of, I guess. I think there's a scene where Muge jumps off a balcony at school to stand up for Hinode. I thought it was a pretty extreme way to stand up for someone that you've got a crush on. Um, the other way too, I guess, was that she wrote this letter uh, for Hinode to sort of express her feelings a bit more and the boys in the class read it out loud and it just sort of made me feel a bit sad that we still have to see that sort of thing happen on the screen. The only other thing, um, <laughs> the idea that Muge, uh, as the cat uh, Taro, like smells like the sun and um Hinode keeps talking about that i thought that was a little bit weird too how do you know what the sun smells like it's a bit, a bit weird um but in saying that let's talk about some themes and some ideas because this one covers off quite a lot and obviously this idea of, of wearing a mask um to to be a cat to get closer to other people like that and it goes closely with identity and um you know the, the mask that you wear in public can often disguise your true feelings and and your true your true reactions to what's actually happening in life and and you can um, throw in these temptations to, to take the easy way out and sort of run from your problems by by wearing this mask. So I like that sort of um, commentary as well. Um, there's a bit about difference in here too and, and the acceptance of, of difference, especially uh, through the idea of crushes, I guess, and sometimes how you don't act appropriately and you act a little bit different and, and you can confuse that idea of reality with fantasy at times. So that's a little bit interesting as well as, you know, in this film I mentioned through some of the scenes, there's, there's a bit of bullying and and I think Muge is, is quite depressed and lonely at times. And we sort of see that through Hinode as well. And they're the issues that, that are faced by teenagers. So that was that was an interesting way of doing that. And, and finally, the idea of, of family dynamics in this too. Uh, the feeling of abandonment by Muge when the mum leaves and the way that she treats her stepmom Karu as well. And, and the judgment even by people in society in the film. There's a scene where there's this old lady who sort of you know confronts Muge on the street about you know, the dad being with someone new and does, does she need, is she being fed and things like that. And, and that idea of, of escaping reality again as well. Um, what did I take away from this one? I think I get the style of anime scores and soundtracks. <laughs> this one for me, it was, it was quite over the top, dramatic and painful at times. It sort of took away from my viewing experience um, as it was sort of a little bit off putting. So that, that's all I'm going to say there, but I think I'm ready to wrap it up. We give the film a rating out of five to come up with Flix Forum score for me. Like I said, like the animation was beautiful in this. I think at times the story is a little bit weird, but I think it was interesting enough and, and sort of covered off a lot of good themes that I sort of touched on there as well. And, and I'd probably recommend this film. So I'm giving it a three out of five. Three out of five, solid score from me. We've got socials, we've got Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. Give us a follow, give us a like if you can, jump on there. 
question I wanted to put out there this week to go along with our social media post is, have you ever been over the top towards a crush? <laughs> Interesting question. I, I can't honestly say that. I've been happily with my partner for a long time now, but has anyone ever been too over the top with a crush? Let us know if you're not too embarrassed to share. Uh, as always, we're back next week with another film from 2020. This one is a family dance comedy drama called Feel the Beat. It's directed by Alyssa Down and it stars Sodia Carson, Enrico Colantono, Donna Lynn Champlin, and Wolfgang Novogratz. Interesting. Haven't heard of this one. Got no idea what it's like. So looking forward to checking that out next week. As always, thanks for listening along. Thanks for keeping me company. And I'll see you next week.